be best known as Secretary of the Treasury under President George W. Bush. But it's a difficult call he made years before that that altered the course of a major American company and literally saved lives in the process. I can't say to you, know, this is all one group or all another group. In 1987, O'Neill became CEO of one of the largest and oldest aluminum companies in the world, Alcoa. On the eve of its centennial, the storied corporation was in trouble. Inefficient, rapid expansion had left profits dwindling and morale waning. Putting O'Neill in charge was a big change. In nearly 100 years, Alcoa had never hired an out-of-house CEO, someone who had not climbed through the ranks of the tightly knit management system and who was not well-versed in metal making. The company was in for a surprise with the first decision O'Neill made. Executives and shareholders thought it was bizarre, unorthodox, and indifferent to the bottom line. So what was that decision? Let's find out. When you came to Alcoa, describe what the company was like you know, in terms of its financial situation. It was a company that was in some difficulty. They had been uh, losing market share and their profits were n not nearly good enough to cover their cost of capital. So what was the first thing you decided to do? Well, the first day I was there, I asked the vice president who was then uh, in charge of uh, safety to come and show me the facts about where Alcoa was. In those days, they were really quite good in terms of safety. Their injury rate per 100 workers per year was 1.86, almost two injuries per 100 workers that caused people to miss one day of work. At that time, the national rate in the United States was five injuries for 100 workers. So after I praised the vice president for you're really good and you've really done great things, I said to him, Try, I want you to know something because this is what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to say publicly to everybody who will listen to me, people who work at Alcoa should never be hurt at work. We should have zero injuries. So you come into this troubled company as this outside CEO, and you say the first thing I'm going to focus on is worker safety. Did Wall Street understand you? Did your board understand? Why is this guy focusing on worker safety? Well, it took a while. I tell you, the people who had been in the organization for a long time, they didn't say it to my face, but behind my back they were saying, he doesn't know anything about making aluminum. It's 2,000 degree metal flowing around the plants. They're clanging overhead cranes. There are forklift trucks racing around these massive factory floors. And he doesn't understand. But as soon as the metal prices go down, he'll shut up and we can go on being as good as we already are in health and safety. And I knew that I knew I would have that kind of reaction. When, first time I came to Wall Street, they invited me to come and have a luncheon meeting with the New York financial analyst community in a big amphitheater down on Wall Street, maybe 250 people in the room. So I got up and I said to them, well, the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, safety. And then they were like, what is this guy supposed to be talking about margin improvement and, you know, more aluminum in cars and all that? What are they doing talking to us about safety? You decide to focus on worker safety really as a path of changing the culture of the place and showing that you can always improve uh, at anything. What were you thinking? I believe that human beings have what I call discretionary energy hey. that they can give you or not. And I don't think they will give it to you if they don't feel that they're treated with dignity and respect every day. If people can say, I'm treated with dignity and respect, a down payment on that is nobody ever gets hurt here because we care about our own commitment to our safety and we care about the people we work with and it swells up into everything you do, so it creates a sense of pride about the organization you're involved in. And then you start asking them for increased productivity and increased... And, and, and they give it to you. You don't actually have to ask for it. You need to turn them loose. Describe how Alcoa did over your, the course of your tenure. Well, uh, we went from 1.86 for 100 workers per year, having an injury that caused them to miss a lost workday. Uh, we got to uh, 0.13, to give you a reference point, the number in Health Medical Care Institution in the United States is five, right? And now describe what happened to Alcoa commercially, financially under your tenure. 
Well, we, I think we improved the market capitalization of the company 900% while I was there. So we went from basically a company that the market valued at $4 billion to $28 billion in 13 years. And you attribute that to, the, you know, the, the start of it was that decision. It was, it was bringing people together and releasing their energy in a positive way. So then they believed in you. Yes. <laughs>